Hey, how's it going? It's been a while, hasn't it? I've got three videos coming up. I have got um, how to make the new stencils I'm using for knife makers. Um, a new heat treating oven I have built, and this is a tempering oven, and it's utterly awesome. And I, but I, first of all, I wanted to get this video done, and this video is running in conjunction with my patrons because I'm about to do um, a, a draw giveaway thanking my patrons for supporting me. So what I'm going to do is make them some chip, little chip carving knives, two different styles of chip carving knife. Uh, and then I'll do a draw and I'll, I'll be over on my Patreon channel, I'll be giving them away. But um, as, as uh, a lot of, I know a lot of people are interested in, in doing chip carving. Um, and I've done wood carving for a lot of years. Back, back in the day I was, I was totally obsessed with it. And these two little blades I've made are about the best type of blade style um, for chip carving. I should say I'd find these two styles of blade the most useful for chip carving and generally for wood carving as well. So I'm going to show you how to make them if you want to make these yourself. I'm going to use two methods. I'm going to do a bit of forging and then I'm going to make one out of a file. Um, or you could make it out of a piece of steel if you didn't have a file or you didn't want to use a file just buy a piece of flat stock or one whatever you want make it out of that same process exactly. Um, so let's get into it. Oh, before I go, can I say that I utterly detest these mid-roll lads that YouTube have forced on creators who've not given us an option. If we have them, they've just blanket put them on everyone's channel. Um, and there isn't a magic button I can press to get rid of them. So I, what I've been doing periodically, when I've got a few hours I've been going, I have to go right through my videos, I don't know how many I've got, 150, 60 videos, so I've got to go right through every single video and take off the mid-roll ads, because as I say, I hate them, I hate watching videos and every minute there's an ad coming on, it really annoys me. So that's the only option to go right through the videos and, and take them off. I have set defaults on my channel now, so there won't be any mid-roll ads like on this video going forward. Um, I think it's just going to kill YouTube, these mid-roll ads, anyway, it's my opinion. So I've got, I don't know, maybe, I've got maybe 30 videos done. I've removed the mid-rolls, so I keep going back and back back to my early vids. Eventually I'll get there. So, let's get into this, guys. I am going to use the top of this uh, old car spring. Because it's a small section, there's not as much metal to move. It'll be a pretty quick task. You could, you could use, you know, anything like an old file, um, an old knife, if you're forging. But first, first job is to just uh, get that in, straighten it out and then just beat it. It's always surprising how much steel you get from a little, little bitty piece of uh, spring like that. It's almost the length of my anvil. really won't take very much work at all. And it's so quick. that rough uh, we just get into that rough shape now Now we'll do. 
basically. So I'm just going to thin down about two inches of that for a tang. Take your bit over. Finish this off. That's looking pretty good now, so I am just going to normalise this three times, so I'm going to quench it. Do a little bit of a cut there. Will do. So I'm going to let that cool. Watch the colour run out of it. I'm only really interested in heat treating the end of the blade there. that a couple of minutes and we'll put it back in. I'll finish the rest of this off with grinding but I'm just gonna because I've got a grinder if you was doing it with a file now you would let this anneal you put it in some ash and let it anneal get it nice and soft do all your filing then I would suggest you heat treat it but if you've got a grinder it's just as easy to heat treat it now harden it and then do your grinding it's only such a little thing you know it's easy right so normalize again and I'm not looking for as hot this time just want a little bit cooler right there you can test this with a magnet to see where your colors are and it becomes magnetic you want it a little bit hotter than that. I'll do this again. Not as hot this time. Quite difficult with this forge. Basically there. Double orange. And this next time we're going to go in and uh, heat treat it. could use any kind of vegetable oil, it doesn't really matter, you know. Get a file and check it. You can see the, the, uh, the blades just skating over that now. Well just to look at the grain, I put it in the vise where I'd put the two uh, notches on the side snapped off as clean as a whistle, you can see it's got a lovely grain structure there so it'll make a nice little knife this. I've just put a 36 grit belt on, we'll just uh, rough some of this out.
Right, so I'm just going to put a finer belt on and just clean the blade up a bit. And that will do. And well, the forge is still hot, so I'm just going to push that through the forge until I just get a straw collar on there, and that will do as a temper. The tank's turned out, it's roughly 5.5 mil. So I'm going to put a 5.5 mil hole in the end of this block. So there's my hole. My tangle just uh, just slide in there and it'll tighten up. It's a little bit wider at the front there so it'll tighten up nicely after it's been epoxied in. Well just before I epoxy that in I'm going to run the rough shape out on the bandsaw. Yeah, just drop it in there. Looks okay. And this is the back end of a file that I obviously cut down and forged something out of it. This is just an old file and it's perfect for one of these because you just want a little hidden tang like that. So you've already got your tang. So all you kind of need to do is come from the top of the tang there. We'll take that off with a cutting disc and then we'll bring the point down like so and then we'll take a little bit off the bottom because it's a bit wide that so that's that's how we're going to make that one so you can take a whizzing disc to that or you can simply grind it off now if you're careful with the file this has already been annealed this file so this doesn't really apply but if you if you're careful with the file you can actually get away with doing all of this without doing any heat treating. So if you're cutting it, if you're grinding it, keep putting it in water, keep it cool, don't let it get above 100 degrees and you'll be fine. So this first one I'm just going to cut it off on the bandsaw to that shape. got that profile it's rather thick it's probably two and a half millimeters thick and I'm going to reduce the thickness of this now if you've only got a grinding wheel you can do it on a grinding wheel obviously this is annealed because I was able to cut it on the bandsaw and I simply put that in the forge got it just glowing yellow a nice uh, orangey yellow color and I just turned the forge off and left it in there because it's completely soft and I'm gonna, but I'm gonna put it on my belt grinder now, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bring that, uh, that tip. I'm just gonna bring that down slightly, and I'm gonna reduce the thickness of this. That's what I've done, I've just taken it down on the grinder, down to a 80 grit I think it is. It's, it's a little thin but we're not going to do a, a very vicious heat treat on this, it's going to be very very simple. I'll show you how we do that. So I've just got a little can of oil there. Any kind of oil will do, vegetable oil, whatever you've got. That's actually Parks 50 but uh, you don't need that. That's literally all you need to do. You saw how thin that edge was. It's not been buckled, warped or deformed so uh, that's fine and it will be really hard. You can tell by the sound how hard that is. 
So yeah, we have now got a hardened little little hardened blade there now. That is a 65 HRC file, which we'll test on there where it's clean. And it it, it may as well be made of wood because it it's just skating across the surface. There's nothing happening to it whatsoever. So that, that'll have to be tempered. I could break that in half now if I wanted to. You'll find the most comfortable handle shape for these little chip carving knives is, is kind of like a teardrop shape. Um, all you need is a piece of timber, say 30mm, 20mm, 120mm, which is about four and a half by an inch a bit, an inch and a bit and three quarter of an inch, something like that. Um, what you want to do is drill a hole in the centre to, to fit your tang or just slightly, should I say slightly smaller than if you've got a tapering tang slightly smaller then you can just open the front up there with a little chisel or a knife and then you've got a nice tight fit but these will be epoxied in anyway so all you need to do is draw yourself a centre line there um, and on the 30mm side you want to come back about whatever that is it's about I can't do I can't do metric in everything <laughs> so, so it's about inch and a half there and then you just want to scribe another couple of lines there so you've got a bit of body where the tang goes in and come off that and just take it out to there on the same on each side and then from there come back to the tail again about there and taper that back like that and you get like that torpedo sort of weird teardrop lozenge coffin shape I'm just going to run that off on the bandsaw now or you can use a chisel or something and then I'm just going to shape it on the sander just run that off roughly you can see my bandsaw is more burning through than cutting Doesn't take long and that's kind of where we've got to. Got like a little minnow bait. All you need to do now is put hooks on the tail, a hook on the belly and a screw eye in the front and a lip and you're fishing. And just elongate the end of it where the wider part of the tang goes in. Or you could just take a drill, a drill bit, just run it in with your cordless going to take one of these almost perfect and that's it just really comfortable whichever way you hold that it's 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 just nice it's a nice grip it's just the right length you can fit it into the back of your hand you can hold it get very precise little cuts with it so that just wants that just wants some epoxy on it now well, these are the blades I've made and we have three here in Damascus and you can see these edges we've got the swept edge and we've got that will become the edge so we've got two different edges there we've got the, the swept tip and a straight edge these are both useful these edges for carving different things it's not something I'm going to get into in this video it's something I'll do in another video um, if I was, if I had to choose between one of these blades, I think I would possibly choose the one with a straight blade at a pinch. I mean, there's not, there's really not that much in it because they're both very useful little blades. But um, yeah, I think I would choose a straight one at a pinch just because it would be more useful for me with tasks like cutting leather, cutting any kind of things like paper templates, uh, whereas that it would be more useful for carving although it would still cut leather and paper and everything else but that's got a slight edge over it having a straight edge more like say a Stanley knife blade 
Um, and the, these these just want to clean up and are, and are sharpened now. That is the one I made from the coil spring. That is the one I made from the file. And that's just a spare 20C blade, them two. Uh, so they're, they're all ready to go, ready to use. I was going to put some footage on of actually carving and using these little knives, but it's pretty much self-explanatory really. It's, it, I, don't think, I don't think chip carving and wood carving is something you can necessarily teach remotely. The best way i found to learn how to do this is to just do it. And no one was born a good wood carver. The best way is practice and practice and practice. And the more you do, the better you will get, believe me, because that's how I got. I did get actually get quite good at wood carving in the end, but it took a long time to get there. And it's just different techniques you use and following the grain of the wood and uh, visualising what you're carving. And you can do all that with practice and that's really all it is practice 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 one of the hardest things you can do if you're just starting chip carving is to turn a ball because that is so difficult and if you can master turning a little ball out of wood by chipping it and shaping it so it's perfectly round as round as you can get it then you know you're well on the way to uh, being a wood carver if that's something you want to do I will do another video at some point, maybe in the next week or so. I'll do a bit of chip carving. I've got one of these knives, so I will use one and I'll show you the sort of things you can do with them. Very, just very simple stuff if you want to get going on it. But there are a lot of videos on YouTube about chip carving, so just have a look at them. You know, different techniques and methods and things you can do. Now these knives, because of the profile, because they are so thin and slender, these are only really suitable for softwoods. If you was to use, if you was to carve something like oak or a hardwood like elm or ash or something like that, they will do it, but it would be so easy to break out the tips on these. Whereas in softwood, yeah, I mean you wouldn't with the, with these being such a fine point, they're great for doing detail, but they're not so good for levering with because they have got such a fine tip on them. So I wouldn't recommend using these for levering unless you get a thicker blade. If you get a thicker blade, they're not going to be as good for kip chip carving. There's always a bit of a compromise. Right guys, thanks for watching. Thank you again to my patrons. Uh, I'll see you all very soon. Okay, bye for now.